minutes and they gave me half an hour, so we'll see how much time I actually need. What I'm talking about is the OpenCast annotation tool. We contracted the Elan IV to make some changes for us. I'm only going to go through the big changes, but there have been quite a few. No. Well, that doesn't look good. It was supposed to be full screen. Never mind. What the hell? Just a sec. For some reason, the first slide was like... Yeah, that slide looked good. The rest doesn't. Just a sec. There we go. That looks better. So this is the OpenCast annotation tool. It's a tool to analyze and annotate videos. Who of you already know this tool? Well, it's actually not so many people. Well, OK. So I'm going to quickly say something about that. The tool was originally named the Annotating Academic Video Tool. It's originally developed by Antwine and was used a lot in Switzerland. And it's made to annotate videos, as I said. So you have like a video pane on the left side, and you have like a timeline under that. And you can have free text annotations and structured annotations. And I'm not a user myself, but as far as I know, they use it in teacher education to classify certain moments on how, to, how the teacher interacts with the students and then to classify the different kinds of actions they took to react to the students. And the use cases that we have for this tool is that we have the scientific point of view that we want to compare expert ratings. So they make a recording of a lecture, and then they have multiple experts across multiple universities rate this video, and then they just compare these ratings. And the second use case we have is that they use it in teacher education. So they have seminars with like 20 to 30 students, and then they get the, the task in the seminar to actually annotate this video, and then afterwards the instructor is going to compare these annotations and then most of the time just discuss it with the students, or sometimes even grade it. We were approached about this tool about one and a half year ago by one of our professors who saw it in Switzerland and wanted to use it, but in order for us to be able to use it, we had to make quite some changes, and I'm going to go through the biggest changes that we've made, or that we actually had made. Those are that now there are custom ACL actions that restrict the access to this tool. There are new sharing options. You can now filter by categories and even by tracks. And the export is now limited to the current video, and you can reply to comments. And some UI changes were made too. We'll go through those in detail. What we added in custom ACL actions is that within the annotation tool, we can now differentiate between students and instructors. So students just get normal access to the tool, while instructors can actually edit public categories, not like edit, change, delete, and also have access to tracks which are only shared with instructors. Which brings me to the next point, which are the sharing options. Within the timeline, users can create so-called tracks. I actually don't know if there's a limit to the tracks a user can create, but you can create multiple, and for each track, you can define the sharing options. So by default, the track is private, but you could always change it to public. However, we had the use case that instructors wanted to use it with multiple students at the same time. So if they wanted to share it with the instructor, they had to make it on public, but then the other students could see what the other students did and could basically cheat. So we had to have at the options to be only able to share a track with instructors so that other students don't see it. This is possible now, I think it was like implemented a week or two ago. What's added as well in line with this is 
additional filters for tracks and categories. It used to be possible to select which tracks to display from other users, but you could only choose a user. So if a user had 10 tracks, you could not choose to get like the first five. You could just say all tracks from that user. And now you can also just say I want like the first or the second track. And furthermore, you're, going to, you're able to filter which categories you want to have displayed in the structured annotations, which I'm going to show you in a demo later on. But now we also improved the print and export. Basically, there is a print now that actually works. And the export is now limited to the current video. Before that, if you hit the export button, you just got all the annotations that there were in the system. Now it's just the ones you actually have access to. Another new feature which was requested by the instructors was that they were able to reply to comments. The use case for that was that most of the time if a student makes an annotation, they were using the structured annotation and then were making a comment to that to justify why they used this structured annotation. And then later on, the instructors would give feedback to them. So now we added an option to be able to reply to comments so you actually see what's the answer. Furthermore, the UI has been translated, well, at the moment, only to German using Crowden. But if you want to add another language, that's totally possible now. I don't know if our Swiss users, maybe French or Italian, I don't know what you might want to have. But certainly possible. Another option that has, I think that has not been implemented yet, but that we are looking really forward to, is to have so-called UI templates. At the moment, the UI layout is completely fixed with the timeline under the video. And we want to be able to have like a full screen of the timeline, because it can be quite small. If you want to compare multiple tracks, it's quite hard to do and that you would be able to switch between the timeline and the annotation area, because now the annotation area is on the right, on the full length of the screen. We want to, have the, want to be able to switch that with the timeline so that you can have multiple tracks on each other. It's easier able to compare that. Now, let me show you how it actually looks like. Yeah, that's the annotation tool at the moment. So as I said, on the left side, there's like the video. Under there is the track. To the right side, we have the, in the top the free annotations, in the middle the structured annotations, and on the bottom the list of the annotations that have been made. And the big change that I talked about, which are possible now, is to select which tracks you want. So I can just say from this other person, I just want the second track. and. You can even change in which order they're being displayed. It's quite useful. And later on, I can just say that these structured annotations, we call them. There's this little eye, you know, you just click it, and everything blue is not to be displayed, which you don't see at the moment because there's no blue. Let me just do that with the other one. And you just filter on that. Quite handy if you want to only see annotations of one category and be able to compare those. Well, yeah, those are the big changes we made. There were some all minor details, like on the top left side, you see the detail and a small, few more bug fixes. But that's pretty much all the big changes we made. Do you have any more questions about that? Um, yeah, yeah. Hi. Uh, sorry if you said before, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, what is the backend well, of the annotation tool? Works with normal Opencast, as far as I know. But I think you really can answer that. Is question there any backend apart for, from Opencast there? Uh, so uh, the annotation tool adds uh, three modules to the Opencast uh, installation. Um, Currently, the latest change was that our colleague who's programming this, uh, we had um, something similar to the old browser installation where you copy it to the deploy folder. Now it is becoming 
and care feature that you can install easier and from the repositories and so on. Um, so, yeah. Thanks. Another question. Uh, how do teachers use this feature? So they do their lectures in a special way or just you plan it leave open for any any student to comment or well the use case is that we starting next semester we're going to enable the upload for for students and instructors from the LMS so the instructors using this usually produce their own videos they most of the time just have their own cameras going to schools and then actually film the lectures happening there and then upload those videos to the LMS and then just access via the LMS so we just say that based on the roles in the LMS, we restrict the, which people have students access and which people have instructor access to the annotation tool. But we actually just allow everybody from the LMS to access this. Yeah, but, but there's no, let's say, a special way to make a lecture for making sure that students access or whatever. No. Oh, no. Uh, is, it, is it tied to a typical player or can you just use it with a different player? In Manchester we use another player so I'm wondering if we could use that and uh, add it to the player if you want to. Well, I'm not a developer, but I'm pretty sure Rudika can answer that question better than I can. <laughs> so uh, initially um, the tool had only an HTML5 video element. Uh, we switched this on your demands uh, to media elements as a default uh, view so that's looking at least the same on all browsers. That was the problem that you had, that in some browsers you had a download button oh, and yes. uh, stuff like this. Yeah, I only remember uh, Because uh, whatever button. the browser wanted to uh, deliver. So at the moment it's eight, uh, media elements and uh, I guess in the near future we might consider uh, to switch this to Paella Player. As, as we included, uh, that would be a, a natural choice. And um, if you want different players, there's a player connector in the architecture. So you can say whatever you want, you want to include there. And um, at the moment, the default uh, is media elements. Um, by the way, you talked about the layout. Uh, that's what the colleague uh, is currently working on. So we are switching to golden layout, okay. um, where you finally will be able to move everything around as you want and we will add some templates for um, good choices on how to uh, arrange this. Yeah, moving everything around as you want would be even better than what we requested, so <laughs> great. Yeah, he was annoyed when uh, uh, he tried to implement only the three or four views that you wanted, yeah. that it wasn't working as expected. Um, and one other point to uh, add, based on switch is that we are currently looking for them on a different structure. Currently, uh, it has to be installed on the same node where the search endpoint for engage is. Yeah. As switch does not use the search endpoint, um, we are now updating the endpoints within Opencast to deliver the data that would come from the search endpoint so it can be better scaled on any other server. Um, yeah. But Maybe you want to add something else. <laughs> no, no, it was just a question. Uh, if you can just show the UI templates you spoke about. I haven't designed them yet, but I can describe them. So you see the annotations on the right side here? We want to be able to move those here so that we can have this timeline on the left side on the whole length of the screen. It's like one of the templates we want, and the other one would be to have this timeline in full screen. That's already requested, but as Rüdiger said, there might yeah. be more. So the next version, and that's currently these days under development as a colleague is staying home and <laughs> working on this. Um, the first draft that I saw is simply uh, he could grab anything and move it to another point, and if you remove something, the space is filled and so on. So it's sure. a f more flexible design then, and we will add some templates that you can select for uh, these views that you want to have. Thanks. 
Uh, I haven't had any experience with annotations up to now, so I would be glad if you could maybe demonstrate how it shows uh, on, the actual, on the actual video in OpenCast or in any player. So can we repeat that? It's quite hard to understand you here. Sorry. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm quite, quite a dummy when it comes to annotations in OpenCast, and I'm not, I, I don't have a, um, an image of how it looks then on the video, or is it supposed to, um, to print on the video, or just uh, be there as a comment, or what, what's the...? Uh, I guess uh, the next talk will be about use cases for this tool, so uh, from a non-technical point of view, and maybe we uh, postpone your question uh, Okay. Um, to this, uh, yeah, but yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, probably another technical question, uh, but um, you did say that people can annotate and those annotations will be available to everyone right now, okay? Yeah, that's the current situation. Um, so in, <laughs> number one, what type of flavor would these annotations be? Number two, um, how would, if we get to the point one day of annotations being specific to the person actually looking at it or only seeing the instructors, how would you imagine that you would share annotations between students? And um, yeah, that's basically it. And how would you see, say, a class with a thousand students all having their own annotations? Well, as far as I know, the annotations are stored separately. I'm not sure there even is a flavor for that. Uh, on sharing annotations between students. Another feature that is on our wish list would be great to have is to have a so-called group editor in the annotation tool so the instructor can just say those students are working together and then they'll be able to share a track within the group. Um, yeah, so uh, there is no track for annotations. It's at the moment really in the database and pulled from this tool and it can be exported to other tools. So the use case is uh, not like a regular player. The use case is more as a scientific tool where uh, you can gather data from a recording and analyze it uh, with SPSS and other tools, uh, Excel if you want to, um, afterwards so that you get uh, quantitative data. But maybe David will expand on this, otherwise we keep it in that discussion. <laughs> <coughs> Any more yes. questions? One more in the front. Hi, thank you. Um, I, we have a use case. We do a similar type thing of annotations and um, we re-edit our videos so students may make comments, timed comments over the video and then we, we may push an edited version and we're actually adjusting the comments based on the timeline so the students can still see you know, people's comments that way. Do you, would you allow the videos to be edited or how would you handle that or have you consi considered that? I actually haven't thought about that, it's just we don't have the use case as the videos the instructors are uploading are already edited beforehand so we only get the edited videos in the first place. But one thing that we're looking forward to have maybe in a semester, maybe two, is what Tobias is presenting later today, the edit distribution, so that we would have the editing of the videos separate of the annotation tool. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you.